You know what, I initially thought this was a joke. Just buy tokens, and your occasional users will get access to our top products included with Flex. But they're 100% real about this. Tokens are available for purchase in pre-specified amounts. Every product has a unique daily rate, so check the rate sheet so you can choose the amount that fits your needs. This isn't satire, this is the real deal. Like, this is mobile gaming level atrocities that they are now beginning to do. Tokens last one year from purchase and do not roll over, so you can just buy more whenever you need them. I, I don't know how they're going to recover from this. We'll notify you if your tokens are running low, so you can buy more and maintain access. Visit autodesk.com slash flex for more information. A lot of people in the industry have seen Audiodesk's new announcement on their pain scheme, which basically is like a very shadowy practice of mobile gaming where you will spend a certain amount of real world money to have kind of like this in-game currency which you then use to spend on in-game items. This, you've also seen this actually in Roblox, they've been talking about this a lot and how shady that internal market is and now I think Audiodesk's trying to do the same thing because they realize that if they can make you spend and you know it's not just you as an individual but more as you as a company or business if you can spend thousands of dollars on this in-game currency on the software that you need that money can no longer leave the environment and the fact that it expires after a year is it's just dismal practices and should not be tolerated in the industry. Now, this has caused a lot of discussion and people kind of wondering what software should we be using? Because obviously this is a very shady practice and, you know, for people, for example, like myself, who learned Maya in university and we know that's a bit more industry standard than it would be, for example, for Blender, what 3D modeling software should we be using? Should we be using Blender, which is this free open source and, you know, upcoming software, or should we be learning, you know, the more industry proven, more expensive and kind of broken software that is Maya? And, you know, there's other things like 3ds Max and, and you know, if you're more into cinema and VFX, then <laughs> to get certain people off this video very quickly, if you do want to do film and television and, you know, more practical, real-time, crazy, you know, scientifically accurate 3D modeling and visual effects, then I definitely do suggest going with Houdini because that is the, the best that you can do if you want to be a technical artist. Then I also suggest that you pretty much learn rigging in all of these programs, um, but you know, definitely learn Houdini because it has some great automation and you know, technical art toolkits for you to do. And you know, if, if you want to do film and TV and, and you know, blockbuster films, that is the thing to learn as well as Cinema 4D. But now, going more in depth for those who want to learn for things in games, and this can apply to other industries as well, but you know, we're going to represent it for games because this is a indie dev channel. What 3D software should you be using and what should you be learning? You know, if you're an upcoming 3D artist, what should you have at your disposal in regards to software? Now, the first thing I would like everyone to know is that the best thing to do is to just get started. And if that just means downloading Blender and starting to 3D model, then I think that's the perfect thing for you to do. If you don't have the budget or the experience, then there is a plethora of free resources and software for you to learn from. And, you know, just download Blender, watch some YouTube tutorials, buy a Udemy course. Seriously, like, they're not that much money. And, you know, spending 20 bucks really gets rid of all the awkward Hi, hello, welcome to my channel. Please press the subscribe button and share this video. Unity is actually a great resource in, in learning at a somewhat educational level, but not with the expense that you would get at, you know, like university or a trade school. So for those who are just wondering, hey, should I just download Maya and get started? But, you know, I've got a crappy laptop and, and things like that. I would suggest not to. Maya is a very resource hungry piece of software. It doesn't matter what you do, whether you're working on a high-end rig, if you're sculpting, or if you're just launching a blank empty scene, a new project or whatever, then it's going to struggle from the moment you launch it. And you know what? Sometimes you'll be even lucky enough 
to see the screen. Yeah, that's right. Most of the time you won't get past this one, let alone even see the day of the screen. Okay, just, just putting that out there. Now, the one question I think will really help you decide which software for you to use is simply what you're gonna be using it for. And I know obviously you'll be like, hey, 3D modeling, but no, more on your way of employment or creating that stuff. If you are a freelance artist, then I highly suggest you just go with Blender or whatever software you're most comfortable with. Being freelance as well, if you have the money, then simply spend it on Maya. If there's tool sets that you've created for, for that, whether it's rigging or you know you have the workflow, then stick with Maya. But if you're a bit strained financially or you're sick of your software crashing all the time and you want something that is free, open source and has a plethora of free plugins, then I highly suggest going with Blender. Seriously, okay, it, they are different. They do have different flavors and they work differently. You know, they're, they're quite similar, you know, in regards to them being 3D software, but I know lots of people were kind of intolerant of the other because of just simple interface things or the way UV unwrapping works. But I'll be honest with you, as someone who's worked in both, at the end of the day, they both get the job done and it's more on you just getting used to how their interfaces work. There was a time where Blender was my favorite and then I went to university and I used Maya and I absolutely hated it. But after working in it for a couple of months, I preferred hard surface modeling than I did in Blender because Maya had some really good tools for it. UV unwrapping, initially, the initial unwrap, I actually like doing in Maya with the more finer details doing in Blender. And again, this all just comes down to preference. So if you're a freelance artist, it doesn't matter so much how your work is going, unless of course, your clients are gonna be wanting you to have, you know, certain Blender projects or FBX, you know, Maya files that later animators and certain people can use with rigs or all that sort of stuff. If that isn't an issue for you, then you know you can kind of take your pick, but I would go with Blender just for the way things are heading. Because as we've seen with Audiodesk and just Maya in general, things are kind of all downhill for the bigger corporations. We've seen that with Adobe as well in Photoshop. It's just getting more and more bloated and it's not going to be good in the next couple of years. People are going to be tripping like flies to other more cheaper, more affordable, products that are better in regards to performance and, and you know everything else that you kind of want from that software. However, if you're looking for a job in the industry, then it gets a little bit more complicated. And the best thing I can say to you is to read the job descriptions of the roles that you want in life. If one of your dreams is to work at Naughty Dog Games, then I suggest looking at some of the roles they have open right now, because they do have quite a lot. And they primarily work in Maya and, you know, they are published by PlayStation and they're kind of, you know, the king of the hill when it comes to AAA content. They've put in a lot of work into their graphical systems. They are not going to change to Blender just because it's cheaper. You know, they, they can afford to have that power and money spent because they've already got, you know, the next gen graphics working in it and within their engine as well. So if you want to be a certain artist that works in a 3D program for Naughty Dog, then I would say, hey, look at what they're doing and what they're using and get familiar with that. I'm not saying you should not use Blender at all, but I'm saying you should be at least experienced in Maya so that whenever you do get asked the question, hey, what do you work in? You can say, I primarily work in Blender, but I also have lots of experience in Maya. Here's the projects I've worked with, with, with you know, Maya or whatever else. And that's gonna look really good in your interview process. Now, if there's a different studio, for example, um, if you want to work at Val, if you've made models for them, for uh, you know a Dota competition or workshop, that's gonna look really good when hiring because you already have experience with their workflow. And this is the main thing I wanna get at, is that in the industry, that isn't a simple answer of yes or no, whether or not you should work in in Maya or, or Blender. It really is who you're going towards. For example, for me, if I'm going for a smaller indie studio or a younger studio, someone who, you know, the startups have graduated recently, they're probably gonna go for Blender more. They might use Maya, but again, I think the best thing I can offer in regards to advice is to look at job listings and figure out which one's the best for you because that's going to future-proof you. 
The best answer, honestly, I could give you is to learn both, but have a primary one that you go towards. However, at the end of the day, I think Blender is going to eventually outrank Maya. I mean, they kind of already have with many things, but once you get AAA Studios working in them and making stuff like this, because I know, I know that Blender can do this. Blender is completely capable of making and having these in, you know, other studios pipelines. The problem is that they weren't there 10 years ago. Maya was there instead. And so it isn't so much that Blender can't do these things. They can very well do those things. It's just that it's it's not as simple as just, okay, everyone, we're going to start using Blender instead and watch this YouTube tutorial on how to use Blender. It's that, okay, our rigging tools no longer work. Uh, exporting, you know, wrinkle maps or retopologizing all these other systems that you use. It's, you know, not just modeling uh, a model, but, you know, automation and, and training and all these other things kind of add up that are going to cost the business more than if they just keep paying audio desk hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like it's going to cost them just as much time and manpower to transition than it would be to change. And so that's why I'm saying in regards to people choosing what they want, figure out where you want to go in life and then go from there. It's kind of not exactly, but kind of like doing a trade, you know, if you want to be a carpenter and you want to be a commercial carpenter, then you should probably get some of the more commercial grade things and understand the commercial processes of making, you know, certain furniture. If you're someone who is, you know, more of a sole trader, people who want to, you know, handcraft things and make things their own and have your own flavor and way of doing things, then you're probably going to have, you know, some more hand-me-down tools or different techniques that aren't as industry standard and this is the same with choosing your software if you want to be a freelance if you want to be someone who just makes 3d models and posts them on the unreal marketplace or on unity asset store then blender is completely fine for that it has all the tools and resources you need it and it's just getting more and more powerful and for certain things i find if you see maya have something that you want See if there's a comparison for, for Blender, if there's an add-on for Blender. There's a really good resource I like to use, which is called Grid Modeler. Um, and this is a plugin that costs, you know, a couple of dollars, but it helps with making amazing pieces of artwork like this. Like, it, it might be a bit hard to initially make something like this in Blender or, you know, Maya, but plugins are always available to help adjust for your needs. Now, if you're someone who has invested a lot of money into Blender plugins, well, then I'd say stick with Blender. You've already invested your time and money into that and you're going to be a greater resource to your clients and you know to, to making products it's going to be easier for you to do that than it would be to transition to maya just because you've seen someone on youtube make a really realistic face rig that's that's not a good reason to transition to a different type of technology and so in summary it really does depend on your needs and wants as a person uh, it, it is the same with, you know, I talked about in the Unity versus Unreal. It depends on what you're trying to go for. With Blender and Maya, they can do the same thing, but it's not so much what they can do, but how you're going to be using them and where you want to end up. The best thing is always to do your research and understand where you want to go, what skills you need for that. And if at the time it seems unreasonable to switch to the other software, then stay with the one that you have and get confident in that one. Because at the end of the day, especially when you're looking for a job, people are looking for dedication and skill in certain areas, of course. But if you're a good person and obviously there's your talent in something else, a lot of people are quite dedicated to hiring you and training you up in a new piece of software if you're a decent person. If you're someone who had an amazing portfolio and obviously they've seen you work hard and understand the fundamentals, it's going to be a lot easier to help you transition to a new software than it would be if you just, you know, weren't that skilled in both. If, you know, you had changed to Maya and then you're kind of struggling because you understand why things weren't working and you had a crappy PC and all these other sorts of things. And then you go for a job interview and you're like, I know, I know Maya, but then you show you them your work and half the time it doesn't even look very good because most of the time your, your work was crashing and failing and didn't auto save. Like the funny thing with these videos is that people want a distinct answer and I can give you answers, but it really relies on your situation, whether or not you're looking for a certain role or you want to do a certain thing. Both of these pieces of software can do 
kind of, you know, the same thing. They can both spit out the same product. It's just the way in which you do it. Who you're working for, whether it's yourself or someone else. So in summary, I hope that's helped you out. I hope that I've helped you make a decision that has been critical to your career. Thank you so much for watching. And if you are interested in more videos like this, then go down below and hit the subscribe button and comment down below with any questions you might have. I'm very responsive in this small community that I've begun to create and establish. And if you are wanting to really help out and you want something in return for helping out, I'll go down to the link in the description below and there is a link to Teespring where you can buy my mug with my little avatar face on it. And that goes towards editing these videos, buying, you know, lighting and systems and, and you know, cool effects and will just help me financially support this channel. So if this is something that you're interested in and want to see keep growing and flourishing into a beautiful game dev community, then please go ahead and buy that mug because those contributions will, will help greatly in furthering the content because I, I put my heart and soul into this. That's all from me. So thank you everyone for watching and until next time,